In the following video, I speak with a longtime friend of mine and mentor, Jean-Paul Monic, who is a producer, a musician, and just a wonderful human being. I recorded this conversation uh, so I could have some snippets in a video that I did recently, which featured a radio show that he does. But there were just so many amazing and beautiful insights in this conversation that I just felt the need to share the entire conversation as it was recorded. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this conversation with John Paul Bluey Monic. All right. Um, so um, if you remember like way back in the day, like um, yeah. when we just after we first met, remember I invited you to um, drum tech out in uh, or is that called again in West London? Remember where in I, West I London. yeah, that's right. I remember? do remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah Acton, Acton, Acton that's right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. E Ealing Common, I think, was the. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember now. And uh, remember, I invited you, and you came out to see me play. Yeah. Right. And um, I, I remember I played to this tape. It was sort of like the trendy stuff of, you know, the time I was into. I mean, I was like 18 or something like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was like, I had like Dave Weckl and GRP All Stars yeah. and all of this sort of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I remember, you know, you, you sat through it. Like, I think I must have played for like 45 minutes or something like that. And, um, you know, you, you were really respectful. And, and then you invited me back to your studio and you were like, I, I want to play you some stuff. And yeah. then I think you must have spent like three hours going through your record collection in um, Trident Studios, yeah. just pulling out all of this stuff. And you, you recorded yeah. me three mixtapes um, yeah. of just like all of your favorite stuff. And you, like you were just so passionate, you wanted to share all this, this stuff with mm -hmm. me, right? So mm -hmm. my question to you is, what motivated you to do that? What was it you wanted to share with me in that moment? I've always known uh, and you only know something because somebody uh, gives you an understanding of it. So for me, I had a rough start in life, but there was the people who were offering me like papers and, and colored pens to, to, do, to, to, to draw. And, and I became this little artist, you know, at five, six years old, that people would come along and say, and give me money for my drawings. Right. You know? So I was thankful for my uncle you could, you know, it's like, for me, it wasn't just like, oh, look at me, I can draw. Because, you know, as a child, you have all this confidence, yeah. especially if somebody tells you they're going to give you some money. But my, my respect to my uncle for giving me, for seeing me, for seeing the possibilities from my little rough drawings that I could draw and maybe do something, you know, he would take me to the on his motorbike to, to like the local um, markets and 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 on the ocean, um, uh, on the key quayside, where there were all, all the, the foreigners were coming in, and, and 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 the sailors were sailing out, you know. And I would get to speak to them, so I became kind kind of really knowledgeable because his eyes were open to me. Right now, I always saw that as a gauge of how to be to be like my uncle, right. to be able to open up a door for someone, yeah. you know. So later on, that transpired when I met people like, um, like Leon Ware, you know, they would say, you know, Who's Louis, Leon, you Leon know, Ware again? I know the name. Leon Ware is 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 a, is the most incredible. He wrote Michael Jackson's first single. He wrote oh. uh, probably one of Marvin Gaye's biggest albums, uh, which was supposed to be his album. You know, you should check him out, Leon yeah. Ware, and uh, <laughs> he's like, you know, Mini Ripper and songs, you know. Uh, is a great producer, songwriter, and, and an artist in his own is no in his own right. You know, yeah. that's why I came to California. Fantastic song. You know, it's like just just a wealth of great music. But Leon said to me, you know, we have this gift of music given to us because we are servants. We are here to serve. You know, and the moment he said it. That was Leon, you know, this hero of mine from Tamil Motown, this guy that I really respected telling me this. But it's something I knew already from that experience with my uncle. Right. So knowing that I'm here to serve gives me great pleasure. I've always known it because some people think that the pleasure is only from actually doing and watching people kind of like, um, you know, giving you credence, you know, it's like, you know, like make turning you, telling you you're a star. No, the, the real pleasure is watching someone get what you are trying to share 
and seeing in their eyes that it's going to be a positive for them. Right. You know, it allows me to go into a room of students and see which ones need this kind of attention, that kind of attention, which one is answered a question or which one has not answered a question and look down when I've asked the question. You know, it allows me to see people and gauge them and know what I have to feed them right. in order for them to go from there if I can, okay. you know. So music feeds the soul, you know, and I've understood that from personal experience. So when you, when you came into my radar, I knew that I had to give you time. And, you know, planets aligns and, 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 and people may see in different, in different ways things happen for me. Things serendipity is, is not just an accident. It's a and it's something that you put into progress already. So when I met you, I felt it was serendipitous because I felt that pro process had started way before I met you. Right. When I met you, I just felt, oh man, you know. And then the connections you kept on saying, oh yeah, I'm related. You know, my, my dad's Mauritian. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, and you know, it's like, and uh, you know, and, and and me also having. Uh, children with with a wife who was Europe, who was British, you know, and uh, and you your mum's Irish, you know. Yeah. It's like and uh, and having that whole Gaelic connection, Mauritian connection, musical connection, it was too powerful not for me to impress upon that, you know. And you were a nice lad to speak to, <laughs> you, were, you know. You were brought up right, and you had a good vibe, and what you exude is what people receive and want to kind of give you back you know right oh thanks mm. man That's, i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> um so in preparing for the, uh talking to you about this sort of stuff right now um yeah. you know i really went sort of uh inside my myself and um was just sort of thinking about you know especially the, that moment where you shared that music with me it's just like branded into my brain it was like a real pivotal moment for me because mm. It's like I almost felt like it was an a, an initi initiation of sorts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was mm -hmm. like you were passing on this flame to me that yeah. was so powerful. Also through, through through the medium of music and everyone who inspired you, you were passing that on to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And totally. um, so while I was thinking about it, it kind of reminded me of this sort of like lineage. You know, like in the yeah. in the Buddhist tradition. There's yeah. like a, a lineage, there's a direct transmission from uh, teacher to student, right? Yeah. And, and that just carries on through the generations. And there's something really powerful that is transmitted from person to person yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I felt like... And you, real. And real. Very real. Exactly. Because <laughs> like I said, that I mean, those tapes that you, you recorded for me, they were like the foundation of so much of what I built upon over years. Because, I mean, it was just such concentrated essence of... Yeah that thing that you were transmitting to me, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so when I, when I thought about this radio show that you've put together, yeah. you know, when I started listening to it, it reminded me of all those times when we would sit down together, you know, in the hotel rooms <laughs> or whatever, and you exactly. were playing me all this music yeah. and telling me all of these stories surrounding the music. Yeah. Yeah. And I just felt like, you know, though I've treasured those moments because maybe there's been like a small handful, maybe five, six, seven times that we've done that. And I've, you know, I've always felt like that was something really special that we had that, you know, you've had with other people, obviously, but only yeah. a small select few people have had the opportunity to do that with you on, on such a one to one basis. Obviously, yeah, you, you, you can't spread yourself. That of course. Thing, you know? But then yeah, yeah. when you when you put this radio show together and you've just been putting out all of these different shows, it was like I felt like this was your moment to sort of go inside yourself and be like, OK, what do this is my message. This these are the. The, my exactly. heroes and all of that kind exactly, of stuff. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you know, I'm, not, I'm, yeah, I'm. I, I don't have the pressure of trying to play a record just to to please a record company. You know, I don't. Uh, I don't have the pressure of of trying to keep a job by doing this. You know, yeah. It's like it's purely like, why are you doing this? Why are you? You know, there's no. You know, uh, you know, the, it, whatever little ego there was inside of me a, a, as a musician or, or a music lover, what, then you know, that disappeared in my early, uh, my late teens, early twenties. You know, and uh, and you've, you, 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 for certain, fight different demons in your life, but the music becomes something which is actually pure. 
Right. You know, which you know, you know, you may have messed this up, but this you haven't messed up. This you've kind of nurtured. This you've listened. This you've kind of um, you passed on as a tradition. You've helped people with. You know, yeah. so you know, you, you you know, this is your shield. This is your your weapon of peace. This is your, you know, th- it's everything. So when you when you share music in this way, you know, I ident- I identified with you because you know when you see yourself also in someone, you stood outside of our our, our, our gig and listened to the music because you never had enough money to get in. Well, you know, I, no, I, w- I was in the show, but I stood out afterwards because I wanted, to, I was dying to talk to you okay, afterwards. Okay, the fact that you were outside waiting for me, this is something that I had done myself. You know, so you see, you know, when somebody reminds you of your own ways, you know, right. it's like if I've gone to see a gig, I'm outside, you know, or or sometimes I couldn't even get in, but I'd stand by the side door and listen and then wait to meet them. I've I've met some of the, the biggest stars in the world without even seeing their show because yeah, yeah. I didn't have enough money to go and see it, you know. And the reasons were not just to collect an autograph, you know. My reasons were because I wanted to ask a question, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, of Morris White. I wanted information, you know, what Shaggy Otis calls inspiration, information, you know. It's that little gem from a musician, you know, and also that tells you, you know, uh, it feeds you, but it's also like you 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 understand the nature of the greats, yeah. and you aspire to it. Yeah. Not thinking I want to be great, but you aspire to greatness, even though you may never reach it. But aspiring to it is always going to be a great journey. Yeah. You know. So it, it's like that for me and, and and you and and also I'd listen to you play. At your um, at the what do you call it a college? Yeah, or? it was called Drum Tech. It was just like a small at, at yeah. Drum Tech, and you can see that somebody's got chops and energy, and 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 a certain light about what they're embracing. And as a record producer, you start producing that person straight away, right? You know, because I'm a record producer. You know, so you start saying what he's got to learn is to kind of like to just groove yeah. and kind of keep it simple during this section, you know, and and what a lesson. What, how can I give him that lesson? Because I don't know a note of music. I don't know, you know, uh, what, you know, I, I, I it's time signatures and everything. I can only hear it. Right. So what better way than just to pick the records that have that? Yeah. That what you want to say, you know, uh, a, a drum groove by Harvey Mason, and you know, a, a, you know, a, 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 a certain kind of laid back feeling by Mau Mau of, of Azimuth, you know, on 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 a certain tracks. These guys have got chops, but this this is what I want to show you, you know, and also to understand the story within music, because sometimes when a when a when a when a young player learns, they're learning from what really excites them, and that could be like. Uh, it's always going to be great music, you know, whether it's it's fusion or whether it's pop, you know, it's going to be the upper echelon of that of that thing, you know. But f- for me, storytelling is a very important part of song, yeah. you know, and, and people miss the point sometimes when I tell them about storytelling because they're thinking the lyric, you know. It's the entire thing. It's what the drummer is doing. You know, because the drummer can wreck the story. It can derail the story, you know. Of course. Or, or make the, the the story even more uplifting and to the point where it touches your heart, you know. You listen to someone, uh, you, you listen to um, um, Bill Withers at the Carnegie Hall show and listen to the way the musicians are playing with him on stage, you know, and... As he's telling the stories, they are totally, totally, if it was an example of musicians telling stories at the same time as the storyteller himself, Mm. it's them, you know. And so for me, something like that is a treasure and it's very often given or given to other people and passed on, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when, when you decided to do this radio show, Mm-hmm. Um, did you know you were going to be doing so many episodes or were you just starting off with one? 
how did you how were you approaching it you you you, you there's two ways of going about things in life knowing that you're going to do something or doing it in a certain way where you almost ensure that you get a chance to do more <laughs> right 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 so the way you approach a session if you go in with a session if you go in all guns blazing and really not listening to 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 to, to the people or or trying to entice them or giving them some of your best sweetness you know moment and also feeling like you've t it's been a shared m moment you don't go forward i wanted to to make it like i've shared something with you it's been enticing hopefully the delivery has been has been good it's been cool listen yeah. it's been educational but fun yeah. you know it's been a groovy experience whatever it is because look what i think is good music and what somebody else thinks is good music is two different things you know and then it becomes you know if you put a billion people in in in, in that situation it's a billion different things right you know so uh for me it's just trying to put the passion like you said before of what i feel about this music in sharing it you know from the time i drop it on you and the first note starts i'm excited yeah you yeah, know yeah. i'm getting goosebumps yeah. about some you know i'm like you know and that's that's the way i feel and if i'm playing a tune on my show and it, and, and it, i don't have that experience it doesn't go in the show right you know um sometimes i just gotta you just got to let the music play two or three tracks before you even speak. You know, yeah. it's like, I'm not there to kind of to, to talk over. And, but when I do speak, I want to kind of just say something that either leads you to kind of embracing that song or the album that it's from, you know, so you can make the greater journey with it. So when I did the first show, like you, like you asked, I, I wanted it to be asked to do a second and a right. third. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the fact that they're up there now and you can see their amount. It's amazing. Is a, a, because a, I actually, you know, wished it to be, you know. Right. Again, back to the word serendipity. It's not just a happy accident. I'm glad they asked, but I started the ball rolling. Yeah. How, how did the show actually come about? Uh, the the station is uh, is run by it, it, it is you know it's owned by Charles Peterson mm. and uh, and the and the people at at Worldwide FM and uh, and his label they work together. I mean he's he's one of the is 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 one of the directors. Right. And uh, Charles Peterson and I have had a fan fantastic relationship. Uh, I was the first person. Uh, Giles was. Uh, I think 16 or 17 and, uh, and, and, you know, possibly 18, but very young. Yeah. And when he was doing pirate radio and I was one of the first, um, Mark King of level 42 and, 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 and I were the only two people that responded to his request <laughs> for, to come uh, and, and do a show with him. They actually sent him uh, a level 42 single. I turned up at his door. <laughs> it was his, I was his very first interview. Wow. You know, I turned up at his door with a with an I I I I knew that this guy for some reason I'd made a connection would like Ierto and I turned him onto Ierto and I turned up with an Ierto album and and, we, and he interviewed me. It was Incognito's first interview, you know. Wow. And uh, you know, when you make that kind of a link with somebody, and then they turn out to have probably the best record collection in the world. You know, and you are, and we're already talking about. You know, my record collection is is pittance wow. compared to this man's collection. You know, yeah. and his knowledge. You know, and uh, and when you accept that knowledge, and when you see, him, when you go to 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 listen to him DJ, and and you're back there in the booth, and you're listening, and you're checking out which record, and you're excited because, you know, you're you're learning, yeah, and you're enjoying, you're getting all that goodness. And then he becomes your Ray and our man in the nineties, you know. Yeah. Because of his knowledge of music and he's been able to kind of translate that, he's a really good an A and R man because he does what an A R man should do is is to to guide the artist into greatness, you know. And we got we got we got our biggest sales and our and our and our biggest outreach, you know, on 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 albums that he helped me to make, you know, mm. put me in touch with Jocelyn Brown, 
suggested that I go back in the studio and after hearing us play live and go and cut Always There, although the album was already cut, wow. you know, which went on to be a huge success. You know, it's like it's again somebody seeing you, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody who's listening to music, but also seeing you and understanding how to push you forward. So that's his is is labeled as his his his, um, his own station, Worldwide FM, you know. And uh, so for me to be invited was that my friend invited me. You know, I'd done a few interviews with him and, uh, you know, and he, he, he said to me once, you know, oh, you should do a show, you know. And and I just kind of put it by the side, you know. But this whole COVID thing, yeah. it, makes you hone, it makes you hone in, you know. I'd already started, but it makes you hone in even more mm. um, in 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 that situation because you know you encourage people there's there's a young um a down syndrome lad that i reach out to and help out especially during these times because he had he had covid he had to go in hospital oh. and i and i was uh, i was trying to be by the side of his parents and and uh and be the a, a connection an outside connection to him mm -hmm. you know he's doing a little radio show now for oh, yeah. other down syndrome kids you know oh, it's like cool. and, and he plays them records and, and shares you know you want to be inspiring to people, you know, and uh, I want the show to inspire. I want to, you know, and um, yeah, that's the purpose. Yeah, I love it. Um, so remember the way you said when, when you saw me play, mm -hmm. the record producer and you was like, uh, I want to turn him on to this. I want to help him understand mm -hmm. this. So that was that was the sort of basis for your selection of music that you put together for me. Right. Exactly. So. When you're approaching a show like this that you know is going to go out to the global humanity, so to speak, and it's going to be mm -hmm. recorded for history as long as the Internet's there, mm -hmm. how do you approach making the selection and, and what do you hope to achieve with that selection? The thing about sh sharing something with someone that you feel is valuable is that it's got to hold a certain value to you and always educate you yourself when you when you listen some of these tunes that i'm playing i every time i listen to them i discover something new yeah you know and they and if it's if not they put me in the mood of where i remember i was the last time i heard it which was a good mood right you know so it's connected with with history and feelings and emotions you know you don't just put on a record because it's like oh let me just play this because so and so gave it to me you know yeah it's like you know, all, all DJs place ones, the ones that have their own choice, not the ones, they're DJs now, radio stations, that they're told what to play, you know, and they have to play this on the playlist and they have to say this and they have to do that, you know. Uh, whatever s radio sh station I, I, I choose to go and play and, and do, you know, and uh, there'll be other stations that I'll go on and, uh, and other opportunities to, uh, to do what I do. It's always going to be, first of all, please you. Mm. Because in pleasing you, you already ha know what that means. Right. You know that you've chosen that because of its importance. You know what it means to you. So basically, in pleasing you, you share and you share the best of what you have. You know, I could, you know, you, you could come here and, and, and in my house and I'm, I, I say, let me fix you something. There's lots of stuff in the fridge. Yeah. You know, but if you say to me, you, you know, I, I'm not going to offer you something if you're a vegetarian. I'm not going to offer you chicken, right? Yeah. You know, I'm going to look out for what may be really good for you and try to, uh, you know, how do I make you feel happy? I've right. got to impress myself with the things that I do, of you course. know, what I make for you. It's like, it's got to be, I've got to do this right, yeah. you know, you know, because if it's right, you're going to enjoy it. You know, but I'm going to enjoy the experience if I get it right, because your smile is going to tell me that. Yeah, you know, it's like that was a nice meal. Yeah. You know, it's feeding people is is a per, you know is a perfect example of how you you play music. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes it's sense. it's it's like you give them the spice when you think they need it. You know, and if you think they can handle it. <laughs> <you know? laughs> <laughs> and uh, you you don't overcook it, you know. Right. 
and when you share something, you know, it's like, and I share that, we, we, you know, it's like, I've, I've, there's t- t- tons of young kids, you know, like, you got somewhere like Singapore, or Indonesia, you know, it's like these kids can, you know, they're like 10, 12, 13, 14 years old. They can play the hell, you know, but they can also, some of them can overcook it. Right. They've already learned how to ho- overcook, mm. you know, but some of them are really tasty. They can overcook, but they kind of like, but they, they're lonely, kind of. They'll take you to the simmering point, but they won't burn it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because they already kind of like, I'm like, how did he do that? He's like, he's only 15 years old or he's only 12, you know? And, uh, you know, the ability to do that is because it's been passed on to you, you know, uh, to have, to have class about what you do, you know, Mm. to have, uh, you know, because everybody's going to, to be different about what they enjoy but to have uh, to to revere what's been done for you, you know, and in passing on with that reverence, you know, it's like that you have for it. It's yeah. like, you know, people get it, man. People get it, you know. And if they don't, uh, then it's 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 not for the lack of trying. It's right. not for the lack of being real and truth. You know, whatever you do in music, it's got to be your truth. Mm. You know, too many people don't play their truth. What, you know, what, playing... what, what do you mean by that, by playing your truth? What, what is playing your truth? It's being real with what you have. It's not kind of like just copying someone, you know, for the sake of, of trying to sound like them or having their success. If you're copying them, it's to kind of broaden your horizon mm. to make you a better drummer or a better guitarist or a better songwriter, a better producer or a better person. Right. You know? Uh, that that some some somebody's truth can become your truth, because it's like it becomes the real. This is this is what I believe in. This is what I practice. Yeah. You know, and some people put put that down a religion or some faith or some uh, some c- culture. You know, it's like that's their truth. You know, my the, the closest that I the, to the open truth that I've got is you find it in my music. Mm. You know. Because if we have a conversation, I can't really go talking about people that are in my life that have done me wrong or peop- or things that have gone wrong or things that I'm trying to fix, stuff that, that may hurt people. That's why I don't write a book. Mm. You know, I, I started writing a book and I threw it out. Oh, yeah? I threw it away. I, I tore it up because it just my understanding of things may not be this uh be the the way that somebody else saw the picture at the time right but with music it's what i've created it's what i've listened to it's what's been created and fed me it's it's the closest to my truth the music that i make is the closest to my truth right it's my heart it's my soul it's what it's everything that you can take from it you know without exposing anyone you know, mm. yeah, sure. Like someone like some some a song like Deep Waters, I wrote about Mesa's life story and and and, and a relationship with, you know. But even that, it's a, it has a had a wider meaning and had to kind of be cleared by her. Right. So blue, you know, this is exactly what I'm feeling. You know, and that was okay. You know, and everybody concerned was okay with it because you know, and because it was that, you know. When the truth is spoken by the person that the truth is about, that's even like bigger. Yeah. So some something like Deep Waters, if because Mesa sang it mm-hmm. and it was her story, that's the ultimate truth. You right, know? right. It's like right. that's somebody that's why, you know, people say to me, How comes that singer can convey that message <laughs> so powerfully? It's because they understand it. Yeah. They've even lived it. They lived it, yeah. Or want you to get the emotion they get from it, you know, it, because they've been a bystander of it. Yeah. You know, it could have been something that's happened to, to somebody's mother, you know, but they're singing about it, you know, and it's powerful because they feel it. If you feel the experience, you know, and and I believe that to be, I'm the I'm the person who actually believes that to be not just for the singer, you know, but for the, for every aspect of people involved in the production Mm. of a song or story or a film. Right. You know, it's like, I never think, well, that film is a hit because of the actor. 
Yeah. You know, I'm I'm right down to the nitty gritty. It's you know, it could be the guy that 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 came into the room. You know, it's like to 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 carry some food in but was inspiring at, at that moment to, to gave someone an idea. Yeah. You know, it could have been the guy who made sure the studio was clean, you know, mm. the, ne- the next day to kind of start off with a clean sheet. It's like every, all the little aspects, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you look at life that way, you know, it's like I want my, my productions, I want my radio show to be like that. I mm. wanted to have, wanted to be relaxed, but have the intricacies that yeah. we, 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 we share, you know, that, that expands our horizons. Yeah. So, so what, what is it about soul, funk and jazz that resonates so deeply with you? Uh, I, I can't speak German. I love the language. I have German friends and I've, I love a few words that I've, I've learned, but I can't speak German. Yeah. You, you, you speak German. So, so, uh, you, 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 but you understand what I'm saying, but I can't speak German, but I love it. Yeah. But, so the language that is best for me to share something sometimes is English, sometimes is French because I, I, I learned it at a young age but kind of didn't carry on. But my limited French sometimes cuts through. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Creole to my, to my fellow Mauritian, oh, you know, suddenly doors are open. He speaks Creole, you know, it's <laughs> like, you know, so like, whoa, you know, we take it to the next level, yeah. you know, it gets kind of crazy, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like a party started, you know, just because I've said that I could have said that same thing in English and that the, the party would have not got started. Right. It would have just been another line in the conversation, hmm. you know. So for me, the language that you've learned is important to describe what you want to say to kind of for you to share and for you to exude the joy that you have for that language, for Mm -hmm. that vocabulary. My vocabulary is jazz, soul, funk, you know, it's like, but it's also, I could do a show about rock, you know, but it's where people have accepted me and, but it's not going to stop there because at some point I am going to do, a rock show, but not on that station, not on that, not mm. on here. There's going to be various things uh, where I can speak because the platform is the right one, you know. And uh, there are going to be other platforms where, you know, I can share my experience of of, of Deep Purple, of, of Led Zeppelin, the way I grew up with that music, you know. It's like the first bass drum that I heard that made sense to me as a bass drum. That's like, listen, to, that, that gave me the I, the focus on a bass drum, you know, was not a soul record, you know. It's what was like, it? it was a Rolling Stones record, oh. you know, and uh, f- f- from, from, from 1965, 1966. But then the person that made me really interested in actually how do you get the sound of the bass drum that was John Bonham. Right. You know, I, I first became aware of the drum kit with with the Beatles and with Rolling Stones, you know. Yeah. Like, because it was kind of more up front yeah. compared to the music that I'd been, listened to up, up till then. But the thing that actually put it in my face was Bonham. John Bonham. Yeah. You know. Makes sense. Then, you know, then, you know, then the you know, the rest of it, you know, the, the groove, you know, it's like going in into a record shop to buy Wishbone Ash and going downstairs and seeing like guys listening to this thing, jazz, you know, and it's like, and, 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 the, and the, the, somebody put it on, you know, different people were waiting in a queue to just touch various records and you'd hear whatever people listen to and, you know, headhunters, you know, it's like hearing, hearing the head, the Herbie Hancock headhunters album, you know, and hearing, you know, uh, Harvey Mason and and hearing uh, uh, the, the various musicians, you know, it's like, and just then looking at the names and, and understanding, you know, Mike, Mike Clark, you know, and uh, that, that sends you on a... Yeah, it's a rabbit hole, isn't it? It's a rabbit hole, man. And then you become you become a crate digger. You become like you know you become a crate digger online. You become a crate digger in a shop. You know you're constantly getting music. You know which you know 
which is great because, you know, it's like it, for some people it's a big book collection. For some people it's, um, it, it, it's, it's music, you know, yeah. it's, and I'm definitely one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so, so on my channel, you know, because I do a lot with Ableton and, and pr production and that kind of thing, obviously there's a lot of um, young people who are into, you know, learning about production and what it means to be a producer and all that kind of thing. What is your definition of a producer and what makes a producer a great producer? What makes a great producer? Uh, it's knowing that it's horses for courses, that the same horse will not be able to run this long distance, that the same horse, it, this may be a sprinter, you know? Mm. It's like knowing, coming in a room and knowing what you have, you know? This is the best thing for that, you know? Right. This is the best sound for that, you know? It's like knowing what suits what terrain. You know, and, you know, so that goes into, uh, you know, each guitar lick that's being played that goes into every, 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 you know, the drum pad and the tempo, you know, and the way that the people are being in, in, in the room, the conversation out, you know, with, within the music, but also the conversation that's going on in the room around the music. Is that helping it? Is mm. that kind of holding it back? You know? It's, you know, it's as somebody come in with too much ego, as some as somebody got to be reined in, as somebody got to be pushed to come out, you know, to go, look, man, just open up here, man. It's like, listen to this. You know, you've got this ability, but you haven't kind of listened to this. This should open you up, you yeah. know, it's like. You know, I love the bass lines you're playing, but listen to Anthony Jackson on this. You see that? He's still being subtle, but listen to the way he's moving underneath here, you know? Mm. It's like, so it's, it's, that is a producer. And, and if you've picked the right studio, mm -hmm. if you've picked the right engineer, if you've picked the right person to kind of play the part in each department, and you've picked the right singer, the right backing best arranger for this brass line you know and should it should should you and and knowing when to say to somebody who's got all the great chops and the great learning and the and the, the great knowledge to listen that's too much right. you know hold that back you know like let what me you just were saying you, earlier let, with the overcooking yeah, and stuff isn't yeah it? let me sing you this simple line right you know it's like right now we don't need Brecker brothers right now what we need is brass construction mm. You know, we need that punch here, you know. But here, we definitely need, you know, we need more Brecker here, you know. Oh, it's, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's knowing it's knowing the balance for the, for, for, for the story, you know. The mm. song becomes the first thing, you know. The piece becomes the, the thing that you're serving. Right, and you can go any any ways, and and some people will be like, no man, it's like if that musician is on it and they're playing it, it's perfect. That's because nine times out of ten, that's the way they hear music, and nine times out of ten, that guy understands that kind of music and he's playing it right. Mm. But sometimes it could just be their choice f for other reasons, you know. And and I I I have known music to become disconnected when it could have been great. Very often I listen to records that I was like, if only they'd left that out, right? I'd be able to play that. But that kills it. That destroys it for me. You know, mm. it's like, and when I go about doing a cover, it's not because the song is broken. I will never do a cover of a song that was already broken. Right. But just to say to you, this is where I learn it from, but this is what I'm going to do to pay tribute to it, mm. you know, because I understand that I have my own journey, my own story, and my own th th part, my own interpretation to tell. Interpretation is a very good thing as well. It's not always about, you know, be the, the purity of something. It's like it's, it becomes a, another truth 
Although that is the truth mm -hmm. right here. Don't you worry about worry about a thing by Stevie Wonder is the truth. It's the song that saw me through 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 hard times at school. I sang it. It's the ones that got me girls because I, I would sing it to them. <laughs> you know, it's like it's my truth, you know, yeah. for all the for, for for all the various reasons it was my truth. You know, but here I cannot just do what because I cannot speak like Stevie Wonder. You know, I don't have the same vocabulary. I don't have the same and I don't, and I'm, and I may not be in the same mood. You know, I'm going clubbing. You know, I need it for it to have this mm. little, this little bump. We've just had always there. Then it's excited me about putting a little kind of slight house rhythm thing to it because I've, you know, it's something. It's a path that I'm on. You know, it's that journey, but it's my truth. Right. You know, don't you worry about a thing by incognito. It's my truth as much as Stevie Wonder's version is his truth. Right, right, right. Um, so speaking about Stevie Wonder, I know he's yeah. been a massive influence on you. <laughs> yeah. And we were talking about, you know, the greats earlier. What, mm -hmm. what makes Stevie Wonder one of the greats, in your opinion? Okay, it's on various levels. But he obviously had so much music inside of him from a young age, you know. Mm. His career tells you that, you know, he's had hits. And when you have hits with a music that's not even kind of being played on the radio and you're kind of being part of the reason why it's being played for the first time, you know, you're, you're, you're walking and treading greatness, mm. you know, from a young age. You know, um, a voice that knows no range. You know, when you're blessed with that gift, mm. you know, and you're not squandering it, you're kind of spending all the days and the nights that you can, even to this day, you know, it's like, I mean, I haven't seen him recently, but in the past few years, you know, I'd go to his place and he'd be waking up musicians at three, four o'clock in the morning and he'd be like, you know, let's get in, let's do, let's do, let's, 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 let's play, you know? Yeah. Because he's creating, you know. He has greatness because he wasn't afraid, you know, you listen to like Superwoman, all right? Mm. He's not afraid to change things halfway through. He's not afraid of, he's not, he's not formatted. Right. You know, he's but not he's rigid. Like free. Yeah, he's he's really free, you know. Mm. In that sense, his music is jazz okay. because of the freedom that comes with 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 his approach. You know, mm. it, it tears up the rule book every time. You know, and each album, as you, as I was buying it, was tearing up the rule book. Mm. You know, and he was working with people that were on the cutting edge. You know, people that were working with synthesizers and and uh, you know. Uh, and, and creating stuff with moves, with banks of sounds. But then he'd be sitting there and you put that sound in the, it, it, at the end of his fingertips, mm. you know, and what the process of him hitting the fingers and going to his ears and what went on in between is just like magical because it's not something they could have done, but right. they created the sound, mm. you know. They set up the sounds for him and then he would say, put a bit more buzz, a bit more fizz in here, you know? Yeah. Because he wouldn't have known about, you know, where the cutoff point, where this is and that. They had to kind of do that for him in the in those early records, you know? And, but the moment it was at the end of his fingertips where it became tactile to him. Yeah. You know, it's a direct connection to his soul. Mm. You know, his ears are better than most, you know? I remember after we'd had... You know, everything that I believed about Stevie Wonder, every time I, 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 I would hear a story about, about him, you know, it's like I would, I would speak to Leon Ware, who became a friend, and he would tell me about Stevie. It would be like, you know, this thing would be, this, this whole feeling I had for him would grow, you know. My love for him and my understanding of him would grow. But it was none greater than the time that we were playing the House of Blues in, in L.A., everyone, no one told me that Stevie was coming, let alone going to join us on stage. Oh. So I had my eyes closed during the opening lines of Don't You Worry About a Thing. And then when Mesa's voice was supposed to kick in, I opened my, I was just about to open my eyes 
And before I, my eyes were open, I heard not Mesa, but I heard the voice. Oh my God. Of Stevie. And I even forgot how to play the guitar <laughs> for like a good five minutes, you know? And because it, it kind of totally threw me, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's the biggest surprise, of, you know, up till then of my life, you know? Yeah. You know, nothing prepares for you for it. You know, the on, the only thing that is on that on par with that is when your child is born. Yeah. You know, wow. it's like you know that's the only thing that can supersede that feeling because that's something that's another, another emo, emotion that you can't. You know, I, I I've tried to put that in song, but I'm failing. I'm still trying. I, I will I will die trying. <laughs> <laughs> but Stevie started to sing, and as we we're going through the gears of the song. He kept on riffing higher and higher and taking it like to a shocking level where it, it's like it didn't stop. <laughs> and then when you thought it was going to stop because it reached its eye, eye, it would find a new place in a lower kind of register, but totally new place. Uh-huh then work its way and supersede where it was before. Wow. It was it was just magical. Yeah. And it made me think, not only have you got this ability, but you have the control of it. You know, those are the greats. Right. Those are the greats. I can play a bit of guitar, but when you've got that ability and then you've got the control and you have the soul, the soul doesn't allow you to overcook Hmm. even when you when you when 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 you when you're on red hot you're not overcooking (laughs) you know (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. it's it's like you're still giving something which is touching the heart Hmm. it's not driving you away from it you overcook it you ruin it yeah you overcook music you push people away from it right you know this is getting to the point where it's like red hot but you're still in there. Mm. You're still drawn. You still want to touch it. You want to get burnt. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you, you, you know, but it's not, it's, it's beautiful when I, when I get that and I, and I'll get that from Stevie and that's what Stevie is to me mm. because it's, you, it gives you music, but it gives you a story. It gives you history. It gives you geography. It gives you a lesson in humanities because mm. of the way that he is. I've sat, I've sat next to him. He's impressed me as much musically, but he's impressed me in his conversation. He's impressed me on the same level in his attitude to people. The, his mind has wanted him to kind of call it a day because everybody wanted to kind of get away and kind of like, look, you've been there for like, you've been talking to people for three hours after a gig, you know? It's like, you know, let's go now. But he was in there and it's almost like he knew that some he was there for an importance. He knew that he was there to serve. Wow. Right? Back to be, being the servant again, mm. you know? Because just as the, everybody was kind of, you know, security and all the minders were trying to put a rush on him and I was sitting there and I was watching this and I was studying this, you know, a moment happened that told me he knew that he prepared himself for this moment that, may seem like serendipity to someone, but this he's worked his way to this. Mm. Because suddenly a woman appeared in that queue and and as they ended the queue, she was pushed to be the last person. They shoot everybody out, they closed the door. She was the last person. And as she walked in, she said, hello. And she just said, hello, Stevie. And apparently the last time she'd seen him was uh, like, some something close to a decade before, you know, or some something like between seven to ten years. Okay. I can't remember because there were there were, there were you know I, I was trying to work out where she would have been to, to kind of have heard him. But what was really impressive is the moment that she spoke. He went, "Oh, you're the lady from Wales." Of course, she had an accent, but then he went like, "You named the three children." Whoa, you know. And he remembered that her husband did some the kind of thing that 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 he did. He was like something to do with rescuing people or something, you know. Mm. And uh, and she went and she was like started crying. Oh. She went, "How would you remember the last time I spoke to you?" And with this conversation, 
but he'd held it in his memory banks. Wow. You know, you may not see what me and you see every day. Yeah. He may see something greater. Yeah. He may be able to hold on to information in a way, you know, because his, 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 his wiring is different, you know, and, and it was definitely impre- impressed me that it's one thing having the memory, but to hold on to the details to make this person so happy he recognized the importance of her family to her and the role that her husband played in life. So he was paying credence to all of that. Mm. I mean, to me, that explains to me why I love Stevie Wonder. Right. You know, you can play all the records, but that there is, you put that on top of that and you've got, you know, he's got a fan for life. Wow. I love him. That's so cool. Um, all right, to, to, to finish up uh, this conversation, uh, another thing about my channel is uh, I come into contact with a lot of people who, um, you know, they want to make music, but, you know, they have confidence issues and, you know, but you, you can tell they have that burning desire, you know, to mm-hmm. express themselves that way for, for themselves, for other people. Um, what advice would you have for them? you know, to help them overcome the challenges of putting yourself out in the open like that and being being real and speaking their truth? Well, it's basically you share your truth because that's your story. What you're describing to me is various obstacles that you've had to overcome. Yeah. It's, very, it's, it's your journey, you know. It's when people didn't see you and and and, and they would because... You, you you open their eyes to seeing you. You open their ears to hearing you. You know, you, you know when I sent you to 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 an audition. You know, you got the gig. You know, when I put your name up forward for 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 for, for, for the for your uh, for, um, for the band uh, Urban Species. Yeah, you got the gig. You know, you got that gig because you walked in. And you were confident enough and you learned it. Those are the things that you pass on mm. because the gig may have been something that didn't even exist. But once the, the, the keys, the, what's important to, to show all these people that you see have the possibility, because the reason why you're seeing them is because you can see the possibilities. Right. You know, it's like there are people that you see and you don't see the possibilities. Mm. There are people that you, that come to, to you and you cannot because you know they carry so much negativity they carry so much hate they carry in nothing I, I would rather have an empty vessel mm. you know I would rather somebody come in the room and, it, and and it's just like look I just want to learn yeah you know I you know and there's a, the blank page it's easy to kind of like give him a start you know it's it's easier to get to page two with them than it is with people who come in and it and it's too it's too messed up already you know yeah. and that those exist those exist yeah. somebody can come along and derail your whole thing man and very yeah. often people have tried you know and part of being a, 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 a good listener a good and being attentive is to see them because you're listening and to see them and to keep them away that's part of being a production is you get rid of the riffraff as mm. well you know because people will come and destroy something, you know. You know, you can have a session guy come in and he's a top session guy, but he'll come along and derail your session for you. Mm. You can put somebody in a band on the road that will come and create utter chaos because you haven't chosen. Part of you as a production and what you do and what you tell others is to pick the right team. Right. You know, is to have the right elements, you know, is to seize the moments, you know. So you pass on all of that because you've been on that journey. Mm. So... I mean, if the truth is what we've been speaking about, you've got to share your truth with them. Right. You know, because your truth is that journey. It's simple as that, mm. you know. And if you're still working on your truth, and some people are, you know, then it's going to be hard for you to teach. Mm. But you've already been a teacher for a while. You know, you've yeah. been an entertainer and a teacher. You know, you've been... Uh, you, you you know when 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 to when to open up your wings to show the colors of your of your feathers, <laughs> you know, 
and you've been through that, but you also know, you know, from personal experience as a father, as a musician, you know, as a creative spirit, when it when you hone in, when you hide your feathers, yeah, because it's going to help somebody to see you without your feathers sticking out, you know, mm. when you put them in, you know, and 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 you nurture them, you know, or you take your feathers and you wrap them around around somebody, you know, yeah. So, but so, I could tell you a lot of things, the individual things that you need to do to to kind of. Uh, uh, Hello. Hi. 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 Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In sharing your truth, you will be be able to see some someone. So therefore, you will know which kid needs that little bit more attention. You will see their shyness. You will see, you know, the one that is always talking above the others, mm. and without loot, without making that kid feel bad, you're going to be able to rein that child in, and let them let them. Teach them how to listen, yeah. You know, to other other voices other than their own. You know, so they can grow. You know, it's all those things. So, knowing that we're teachers, knowing that we are carers, knowing that we're here to serve. You know, and basically, what you're doing is, whenever a child comes to you, a young student, somebody with promise, is as well as teach them how to excel at what they do, teach them to serve. Mm. Because in that, they will excel in a way that is beyond in, in, any uh, in, anything else that they've kind of like, that they can imagine, you know, there's, there's no limits. Yeah. I love it. Thanks, Bluey. Thanks so much for all the wisdom. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, I, I got I, I, I to listen to some of that myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, man. That is that is that is the thing. Yeah, that is the thing. That is the thing. Is that you know, I wake up and 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 listen to you know. Somebody sent sent me one of my lyrics the other days, you know, the, 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 the other day, they, the, you know, it's like, I love this song, you know, and I read it and found something totally new from it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was my own song. Wow. And uh, we never stop, you know, like teaching ourselves. We never stop learning, you know. And uh, and it's good that you that that you that you the what your approach to life, because you know you've you you've been through stuff, you know, yeah. with health, with w you know with you know with your journeys I I that you made, you know, going to LA working and and and, and your stories there. In a short time, a lot of things happen in your life. Yeah. And some of it looked like it was even going to take your life, mm. you know. But what it's done is enrich your life so you can serve. Yeah. Enrich your life in a multitude of ways because no battle that you've come through hasn't got to be something that you ain't going to share with someone. Yeah, it's true. You know, triumph over the adversity. So at this time with all what we're going through, man, we can really help people because we have been to places yeah. where triumph over adversity is, uh, you know, a main one. And it's different. It's, it's really one of the saddest things for me is that when you live through a period where everything is so open and opportunities are so great, you know, we're living in a time of dwindling opportunities for the young, Yeah, you know, so people like you wanting to pass on information, you know, it's never been as important as it, you know, in history as it is I now. I agree. I agree. You know, that's why I love your show so much, because it, it's like, you know, when I was thinking about it with all of this COVID stuff, it was like that gave you the opportunity to sit down and be like, I want to get this stuff out there. You know what I mean? Because with, with yeah. your touring schedule and everything that you do in normal life, you yeah. wouldn't have had the time and the energy to sit down and focus on how many 20 shows, 30 shows, not the way you've done in this short period of time. Yeah. 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 I mean, like 
things happen for a reason. Yeah. You know, and uh, and and you must see time allowed f- f- to you as that. That's a very very important thing in life is to see like oh, I've been given time. Yeah. So I can now put this this attention into you know I can put my strength inside that that time. Can't waste it either. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Can't waste it. You know, it's the, the guys at, at Wide FM laugh at me because the moment I finish a show, they've got the next one, you know. It's like I've thrown it at them. Is because it, you know, the stream doesn't stop flowing. Mm. You know, not unless you actually put a brick wall in front of it and kind of like, and, and you'd build a dam. Yeah. You know, it's. Thanks so much, Bluey. It's just I love you, man. I love, I love you. you know. <laughs> And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this conversation that I had with John Paul Bluey Monik. If you'd like to see the video that I made where I feature his radio show, the link will be up here somewhere and down in the description below. Other than that, make sure to hit like. That really helps with my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, leave me a comment below and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. All the best for now. Thanks again for watching. Peace.